True. So joining me is Emma Misharia, founder of EM Consulting and lead consultant. She'll be taking us through all matters pertaining branding when it comes to beer, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to communication consultant. We'll, we will know all about those terms and differences <laughs> and how effective they are. So, hi Emma. Hi. Allow me to call you by your first name, if that's allowed. That's allowed. <laughs> Thank you for creating time to be with us. Thank you All right. Me. All right, so I hope I've not missed any of your titles. No, there are not that many. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm a consultant. All right. That's it. Okay, so if you allow me to uh, go back to uh, uh, some, of, some of the things that I've read from your uh, website, mm. that is EM Consulting. Uh, one thing that came across to me is that you love to turn ideas into uh, very good businesses. Yes. Oh, well, I love you can tell us that. more about that. Um, so basically, how even the business started mm -hmm. was um, I was still employed, mm -hmm. but in, after work, in my free time, I'd spend a lot of time in entrepreneurship spaces. And I'd end up having conversations with my friends who are running businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, so you'd find someone has just launched a new app, mm -hmm. but it's a cool idea. They developed it, mm -hmm. but, and then, um, so that's sort of how the business was born. So we take, we take your ideas and we turn them, we grow them. We get more people to see them because the big belief that I have as someone in communications and marketing is that the reason a lot of our businesses don't grow is because of marketing. Because when you ask a lot of entrepreneurs, they have the products, they have the ideas, they can tell you what money they spent on what, but the one thing they all miss is marketing. And it's very important because if you don't market, you don't get sales. So we started the business with just how can we fix that for entrepreneurs? All right. Yeah. So prior to uh, EM consulting, what was Emma doing? I was on the career ladder, <laughs> uh -huh. still within PR. Mm -hmm. um, I'd worked in PR um, in USIU, so uh -huh. I, was, I was in that department. After that, I worked um, in an agency for two years. So that's where I got a lot of my hands-on experience about digital marketing with some of the big brands across East Africa, actually across Africa. Mm -hmm. So merge all those together in my love of business. So we know how to take your business from just an idea that you are with in your bedroom to everyone knowing about it and eventually converting that into sales. All right. So here comes EM Consulting now. Uh, yeah. How long have you guys been into the market? And uh, I'd like to find out during the earlier stages or during the earlier years of the company. Mm -hmm. I would like to find out the um, the the, uh, the experience that made you feel like this is it. Mm. This is it. This is the business I want to venture into. <laughs> um, so we've been um, in business for four, going five years, mm -hmm. but. It honestly feels like I was telling you earlier, it feels like one, it feels like a flash mm -hmm. because the madness of running a business, mm -hmm. um, you don't no notice five years going by. So I, I sort of understand when you hear companies are 100 years old, it goes by very fast. Um, but the experience that made me realize that maybe I was onto something was actually uh, my very first client. So when they came to me, they were, fun enough, they were also in PR themselves, um, but they were venturing out into their own business. So they had an idea and they were struggling with it. At that time, it was just um, a blog that they were writing, mm -hmm. you know, trying to see how can I turn this into a business that supports itself. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, we went through some business coaching with them. And we also came up with a marketing campaign. So after we understood, we actually defined what the business is mm -hmm. and now turned that into a marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. And from the time it's launched up until now, I, I won't say the name of the campaign, but it's still viral until now. Mm -hmm. They got partnerships with some of the um, biggest firms across the world. Just it's fantastic. So when that happened, when I saw it go live and the partnerships come and the, and just the client, you know, f 
from the first time we had a coffee to now running this big corporation now is when I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I know what I'm doing. <laughs> maybe there's something that can work here. All right. So you mentioned something about uh, the fact that during that stage you realized that this is it and uh, the excitement mm -hmm. uh, from the other side if i was sitting on the other side i'll be like oh this is so easy like you know <laughs> so like so most people look at it at the glamorous side of it like mm -hmm. it's so easy mm -hmm. to just uh, um to do what you guys do i like to find out the work balance because uh <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys have like a uh, few work hours time frame because if I'm in a crisis and I'm your client, I'm, I, I believe I'm obliged to call you at any time when things go wrong. So I'd like to find out more of uh, the work balance. So I'll answer that maybe in two parts. Mm -hmm. One, as an entrepreneur, um, I honestly don't think there's anything like balance. Mm -hmm. It's funny because a lot of a lot of us, you know, quit our job saying that I want to be my own boss and I don't want, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want eight to five or, you know, from seven until nine PM. But when you're an entrepreneur, you mm -hmm. spend you literally have maybe maybe the, the time you're sleeping is the only time you're not working. So that's first a lie. Um, but in terms of even PR and what we do, especially handling a lot of clients, um, these days, there's something called online PR. I don't know if people are really big on it. Kenyans are big on it, but they don't really know what it is. So especially with that, you know, one day a brand you're working with goes viral on Twitter, and not for good reasons. So when you merge PR in the digital space, you have to be on your toes. But one thing that I can say has really helped us are, are things we call monitoring tools and listening tools. So for example, Actually, on my phone, I have alerts for most of my clients. So if the name, if let's say I'm working with, let's say Unilever, for example, I will have alerts on my phone across that. So anytime that name pops up on the internet, I know. If there's a bad hashtag trending, I know. Every day you're monitoring, um, did we have a good day in terms of what people talking more positively or negatively about us? So with that, it sort of helped us balance life mm -hmm. but of course the moment we start seeing something happening mm -hmm. you get on it and you try and manage it before it gets to a crisis all right mm. okay we have mentioned a couple of uh, vocabularies there <laughs> <laughs> that might have, like shifted our viewers so i would like to find out so em consulting uh, mm -hmm. offers so many uh, services we have the, the business coaching we have uh, uh, the strategy then we have uh, which one am i missing Digital marketing. Digital marketing. Yeah. So most people will know better about PR, uh, yeah. what a PR does. But uh, about communication consultants, uh, I think people may not may not uh, know Understand. the difference. Yes. Yeah, mm. So just to uh, to to remove the confusion there, maybe you could you could tell us the difference. So basically, um, communications is the bigger picture, mm -hmm. and. To just put it in a way an entrepreneur can understand, mm -hmm. communications basically is when you, and that's why we call ourselves a communications agency, by the way, and not really marketing and all of that. Because when you, when you say, I'm not selling, or my business, something is not going right. As a communications professional, we come into the business and look at everything. How are you communicating? What are the words you're using? Because, for example, if you're trying to sell a phone to me, maybe it's the words you're using that are wrong. Maybe it's not Facebook that's the problem. But you see, when you go to an advertising agency, a marketing agency, they'll tell you, oh, let's just do more marketing. Let's just put in more money for advertising. But as a communications professional, we go back and ask, one, who is your consumer? Two, do we, do we have something we call a profile of that customer to say, um, my typical customer is someone who is 16 years old. They live um, in Jamuhuri. They wake up at 10 a.m. You know, you break it down so that when you're then marketing to this person, it's in a way that when they read it, they relate and they can then buy. So mm. that's basically what and communication is. And it's very effective. 
for the, yes. for, for the, for the business because your target market? It's actually, net. I'll say the biggest market in, within marketing when clients come to us, mm -hmm. we always go back to communications because that's where the problem is. A lot of them will come and say, Facebook isn't working for me, or I've tried the newspaper, or I've tried billboards, nothing is working. So we go back to, do, did you define who your customer is? Mm -hmm. And then what is the messaging around that? Okay. There's a difference between take this phone and would you like to have this phone? That's communication. Hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that example. Yeah. It, it, it really does sound, the second, the second version. Yeah, it makes you, it makes you, okay, yeah. why? But the first one, it's why are you forcing me? Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll be So on. that's usually the marketing problem with a lot of businesses, especially startups, SMEs, that's usually a lot. What makes a good PR practitioner? I'd have to say, the one thing is, first of all, we are, we are a slandered profession. <laughs> Everyone thinks that we are just, you know, lying and covering lies, but that's not. In fact, um, I'd say truth is the first thing. Even when a client comes to us, we say, the person you should be the most honest with is your PR person. Because we're the only ones who can then go back to all your stakeholders and, ex and communicate to them. We don't lie. We communicate. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. So when it comes to PR and uh, brand marketing, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a field where it entails social relation. Mm. It's, it's a field where there's, uh, it's definitely relationship driven. Mm. So how did you, uh, from ground zero, enable to have a network of uh, a clientele and actually even maintain them? Okay, that's a good question. Um, like any other business, I usually, I usually say for service business, because you know it's different for product, you can, you'll sit in the supermarket and buy or not. Mm -hmm. But with service business, I strongly be believe in, um, in networking. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have to, you have to put yourself in the right rooms. Once you know who your customer is, go to where they are and speak, network. It's the best way. Because if you think about it, if you sell, for example, you're a barber, who are you targeting? You're targeting someone who's working in the office, who's, who can only has time to come to your shop, let's say on the weekend. So you need to be, you shouldn't be, or let me say you should be marketing where that person is. You should be networking there. So for example, if, it's, if this person is a HR person who works in Upper Hill, it means when HR, you know, when the HR events there, that's where you should be, you know, not coming to market in town because your client doesn't sit in town. So networking is the number one for me. And it's how we've been able to maintain. And it's a relationship. It's not, especially now during um, COVID, let me add, a lot of people, it's something I, I say even on my social media, that a lot of people are quiet, you know, because everyone is saying things are quiet, clients don't spend money. But then after six months, you want to pick up the phone and call that same client and say, oh, hi, how are you? So can we go back to business? And they're wondering, where have you been all this? Way? Is it that it's only money you want from uh -huh. me? You couldn't even send a text and ask me, how are you outside of? So that's the main thing that keeps businesses going, relationships. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain that. It's not always about the money. Okay. All right. That's a... Uh a, that's a good perspective what you brought up and I now considering that most businesses have been shut down due, during yeah. this pandemic. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the fact that <laughs> the PR world, uh, for the longest period of time, it has been termed like the big boys club. How did mm -hmm. you, how were you able to just break through this market and uh, mm -hmm. just uh, 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 go past the stereotype mentality? Okay. Um. Well, first, when, um, when I was starting um, my company, mm -hmm. I didn't particularly want to work with corporates. Okay. Because, again, like I said, I'd been in agency. And with corporates, it's just a lot of get stuff done. Mm -hmm. So I think the way I've been able to get through the years is with the clientele that I have, which is a lot of small and growing businesses. Because with them, first of all, they come with, a set budget. It's not like corporate will tell you we have 10 million to spend a year in a campaign. So an SME will tell you we have 200,000 shillings. How can we make this work? So even as a business, we then go back and find the most innovative way to make that 200,000 work for you. 
and clients appreciate that because mm -hmm. you're not spending a lot of money but you're getting the same impact in fact you're competing with the big boys so we are we are people agency okay. <laughs> you've mentioned something that i don't uh, i didn't get clearly i didn't get it clear the fact that you didn't want to work with corporates mm. why because uh, i think most businesses want to work with corporates because they see there is actually where more uh like well, the money is where the money is yeah, exactly two things one like i said because there's not a lot of room for creativity oh no room for creativity and again uh -huh. in our industry it's very competitive with corporates you find that there are 50 agencies going for okay. that one big oh, client okay. and what happens is that in a situation like in any industry where there are 50 of you going for one client the price goes, oh, down. goes down so the client now says i will pay you this for the work so that's one reason and also because there's no room for creativity if i'm being honest with corporates mm -hmm. but also the second thing is because in the research when i was starting my business over 70 percent of businesses in this country are smes so i don't understand why we should be going in fighting for one percent when there's 70 percent it's just no one has figured out how to talk to them Okay, so for every uh, for every entrepreneur, right, there's always that uh, break or make moment. Yeah. yeah. When it comes, things are really, really tough. You yeah. Know? So uh, I would like to find out your story. I would like to find out EM Consulting story and uh, how you guys, uh, you know, propel and pull out from that. Make or break. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't know if there's... <laughs> a moment because mm -hmm. I, th I think what I'm coming to learn because I've not been in business that long mm -hmm. and being again the lead consultant and the founder of the business mm -hmm. what I'm coming to learn is that business has seasons mm -hmm. you just need to understand your season as a business I don't think there's that one moment where you you know you will maybe reach 10 million and then now from there it's just upwards mm -hmm. i don't think there's a moment like that there's ups and downs because if, if you look at it like right now businesses that were very successful right now they're not and you see in business again it's not a feeling it's based on what <laughs> the numbers say it's what the accounts say it's the numbers yeah. so when the numbers are high you say ah, oh, we're having a good time when the numbers are down you know we're not doing so well so it's not, it's not a moment. Okay, let's look at startups now. So what okay. are your thoughts on the Kenyan startup uh, ecosystem? Amazing. Ama <laughs> amazing. Just amazing. There's a lot of... We're very creative and we're very entrepreneurial. As, as, as an entrepreneur myself, I've had the pleasure of meeting entrepreneurs from different parts of, especially the continent. Mm -hmm. And they always say that the Kenyan spirit is just... It's just something, it's something else. Other places people have ideas, you know, they sit on them, but Kenyans, you will think of something today, that thing by next month, <laughs> it will be there. If it fails, that's not your problem. So I think we're very, we're very creative, All innovative. Right. What would be your advice uh, for any entrepreneur, like like a couple of uh, for any entrepreneurs starting off, mm. <coughs> like it's a startup, so what would be your advice on the, uh, towards that particular person? like? As they're Does starting their business now, uh, maybe overall, like generally, in terms mm. of the 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 an advice like tips, just you know, behind their hands, like mm. they should have. <laughs> uh, this is no bias to the fact that I'm in marketing, okay. but <laughs> marketing, mm -hmm. I feel like every entrepreneur forgets that, mm -hmm. and even when they're starting businesses, mm -hmm. we plan for everything else apart from getting it out there so i'll say if there's something even myself because remember i i market for other clients mm -hmm. sometimes i would last year i would forget to market my own business then i'd wonder why aren't i having sales and then i remember when oh. you look at our social media mm -hmm. when you look at when was the last thing we just called our clients mm -hmm. so i'll say keep marketing don't go if you go a month and you've not picked up the phone to call anyone new to call any client you're gonna have a bad next month so, so you feel like businesses are failing on the marketing side? Yes, <laughs> communicate, communicate, especially right now when um, businesses are down. Mm -hmm. I keep saying, um, shameless plug-in, but I run a YouTube channel and, and on that channel, I remember for the last like four 
videos. This I is keep saying. To give us your YouTube channel. Oh, it's called the Millennial <laughs> CEO. Ke. Uh -huh. Okay. So What's I all just about, you tell us more about it. Uh, yeah. Continue, yeah. But like I keep saying mm. right now is, it's a time to communicate. Cause imagine, for example, you've been trying to reach um, the CEO of Safaricom. Okay, he's probably busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but whichever person you've been trying to reach, whichever CEO, right now they're at home. They're forced to be home most of the time. Before, mm -hmm. their schedule was busy eight, eight to eight. Mm -hmm. But now they're they are home. They're probably on social media more. Meaning, maybe if you sent them a message on LinkedIn, they'll see it. Maybe if you commented on their Facebook post and told them, you know, I have this idea, I've been trying to reach you. Maybe this is the time that assistant you've been trying to call to get a meeting with the CEO. Now she can pick up because there's no, there's no pressure. Are you sure they will see these text messages? Because there's always at the back Not of the time. mind that there's uh, a, a, like a PA who is handling their social accounts. But now there's less pressure. Please remember, let's say for example I'm a PA. I have from 6 in the morning. I don't have time to squeeze in a meeting for you. But remember right now, please remember, all these big businesses right now, they need something new to do. Because oh, yeah. they are not selling. Remember, they are not mm. selling, they are not marketing, they, they are stuck also. So they need someone who's going to come and say, hi, excuse me, my name is so and so. I've been having this idea, I've been trying to talk to you about. Then they'll, oh, okay, now we can meet. Mm -hmm. In fact, now you can even come to the office because it's only four of you allowed <laughs> compared to before. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, hit on those uh, uh, CEOs and all companies mm -hmm. uh, that you've tried to reach out to. And uh, this is the time because they are the comfort of their home probably and there is easy access on their smartphones. And let me add, if you're trying to reach someone, you can't find them. Mm -hmm. All these CEOs are now doing Zoom meetings. Please just go on these webinars. <laughs> DM there, so saying, <laughs> attend, <laughs> attend, <laughs> attend webinars, please. And I keep saying, it's a great place to network. Uh -huh. You go on that, on a webinar that has a hundred people, mm -hmm. you just write their bio of your company and you're done. If you do one webinar a day. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, ideas. So let's look at how can uh, brands handle their PR and marketing uh, efforts during uh, this time of COVID-19 crisis. So one rule that I've been telling everyone right now is be helpful. Mm -hmm. Be helpful because the customer you're trying to sell to, let's say a lot of people try to sell to, let's say moms and all of that. That's usually a very big demographic. That mother right now is homeschooling, is cooking, is cleaning, is washing clothes, is what? So right now they don't need you trying to advertise and tell them bye, 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 bye. Mm -hmm. Go and ask them instead, post on your Facebook page. Mm -hmm to that customer, to your 1,000 followers, ask them, how can we help you today? As a business, actually, on our Facebook page, that's what we've been doing. We've been, we shifted from advertising and all of that, and now we just, we educate purely. Right now, we're running a series on how to start email marketing on our Facebook page. Because we realized, you already have so many things to think about. Maybe you want to get started on digital marketing as a business, but you can't afford, because we also understand that you that I'm trying to sell to also think about do I ma do marketing or do I pay a salary? So we said why not teach you and at least help you start. By the time business picks up and you're ready to come and pay us to do it for you professionally. I see you. I see you ever. <laughs> that's a way of watching and luring your clients in future, right? That's, that's a, to that's, help them that's a strategy, even. Right? To help them even. Because uh, the honest yeah, truth is um, I can't take on one million clients. You see, maybe yeah. out of that one million, I can get a hundred. But what about the rest? And they all need to be on social media. I see. So why not teach you how to do it? I can see it from your, from your point. Yeah. Absolutely. So just be helpful. That's the thing. So how can brands ensure that, uh, you know, they succeed after COVID-19? Now, COVID-19, um, I believe like there are businesses uh, which are not uh, explored and mm. actually spread their wings to uh, digital marketing. Mm. Uh, they, they trusted their clientele. Yes. yes. And now yes. COVID-19 came and businesses have been shut down and mm. the only platform is digital. Mm. How can, before you even look at how brands can succeed, let's go back and look at the fact that these businesses are now, they don't have a digital presence. How can they go about that? Uh, so the first thing, when it comes to digital marketing, um, Choose one platform you can commit to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be everywhere. Let's be, let's be honest. These days when you think about social media, someone tell you, I want to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. 
why and you can't even post every day on all of them you see they tell us like the, the more <laughs> you are on these social accounts the no. more your brands are accessible no, 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 the, no, no, more no. They, the hmm? thing the thing with social media that um people get wrong okay. is let's say facebook for example as a platform okay the way it works for you as a user and as a business are completely different and that's why there's the profession that i have <laughs> because they are very different right. if you actually just go on Google and search Facebook business. Mm -hmm. You'll see a whole new guideline on how to use Facebook. You as a consumer used to just going, going on it, posting your pictures, talking to your friend, messenger, that's it. As a business, I have insights. I have monitoring. I have, like even Facebook will tell me, you've not talked to your customers today. Mm -hmm. You get. So yes. they're, they're, they're completely different. Okay, now let's look at uh, some of the ways uh, brands can succeed after COVID-19. Post COVID nineteen now, um, things have been slow. Now we are hiking up. So post COVID nineteen, I'll say that the success of your business post COVID mm -hmm. is based on what you're doing now. If I'm being very honest, there's okay. no like I said, you can't you can't go quiet now. For even though your business is struggling, you can't disappear for three to six months mm -hmm. as you're facing COVID and then resurface after six months and say okay now we are back to it your customer will have moved on will have forgotten you mm -hmm. or when you come back they'll be asking you where were you the whole time when i was struggling please look at if you if you're on let's say for example instagram or youtube mm -hmm. look at what these big brands are doing they're trying to stay relevant they're trying to help people yeah mm -hmm. so it's based on what you will do right now the small things pick up the phone and call a customer continue to talk to them via social media platforms Find new offers that you can give. And I also strongly believe for businesses, it's a good time to look at your business and ask, mm -hmm. what else can we offer? Okay. Even though you are selling bananas, people don't want bananas now, for example. Ask yourself, okay, the point was that they need a fruit. Okay, what else can we add? Is it that they didn't want bananas in this season? You know, it's a good time to go back to your business and find something new to offer. Mm -hmm. So by the time COVID is... Um, ending or we are into our new normal, yes. then you'll, you'll actually have come out a better business, a stronger business. All right. Yeah. One thing, uh, Emma, is that uh, you're very passionate in, when uh, it comes to mentoring, uh, bus like young people getting into business. So I'd like to find out about EM uh, training services. Um, so what we do is, if you're looking to get into business, um, I, what I do is I offer business coaching. Okay. So that means why it differs from, if you want me to just come and speak to a group of you, I can definitely do that and come and teach you about um, just the basics of getting into business and things to think about. Mm -hmm. But other than that, if, if you're seriously getting into it, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with you. So that means we sit down, we figure out, we understand who's your customer, what business model can work for us, how can we make money off of this, one on one. It's a very in depth session. Okay. Uh, all right. So, probably for my viewer back at home, mm. uh, we'll be wondering these services, are they, of course, they're not free because it's a business <laughs> on the other end of your site. But mm. during this time, do you offer, are there, are there fee, what am I saying? <laughs> free. <laughs> Free, <laughs> free uh, teaching services that you, maybe you can actually help out uh, young guys back at home who are watching and they're actually looking forward to start up a business. So in terms of free, what we've been doing is, um, again, go to our Facebook page, EM Consulting EA. There you'll find our WhatsApp number. Um, and from there, we're actually helping a lot of businesses just by WhatsApp. Just ask us whatever question you have mm -hmm. and we'll answer it for you simply. You want to start a business? Just chat us on WhatsApp and we'll give you, we'll help you from there. Okay. If you want you to go further, then we can go into coaching. All right, so there is Emma. Emma, you, you mentor, you can mentor other young people yeah. into business and everything else. Where does Emma get, uh, you know, the mentorship? We want to find out where, where <laughs> do you get your mentorship to have the energy to mentor young people uh, who are getting into business? Every coach needs a coach. Absolutely. <laughs> That's, That's what I, I will say. <laughs> no, um, I mean, you're not going to leave. Okay, there. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Finally. So, uh, <laughs> basically, for me, mm -hmm. what I do, which is something, by the way, if you're, if you're in business, I usually say, when you hear the word consultant, I don't know why people run away from it. Mm -hmm. 
It's just a title, mm -hmm. like any other. Um, but one thing that I've done is within my own networks, I've built networks of people I can ask. Mm -hmm. I have a friend. For a lot of us, you have a friend you know who does finance. That's you have true. a friend you know who does marketing. Mm -hmm. You have a friend you know who does social media. You have a friend you know who knows things about care. All those people, by the way, can teach you something. And that's exactly what I've done for myself. So I don't know everything. I learn a lot. Alright, yeah. so put in a position where you can learn a bit of everything and everything from uh, people from different yeah. uh, uh, careers. Because yeah. uh, when I was starting, I, never, I, I did not know a thing about finance in KRA. But you just, and you'll be, you'll be shocked that if you ask your friend, can I have five minutes of your time tomorrow, I ask you just about, they'll give it to you. It's just we don't want to ask to learn. Yes. Now mm. we know that is very important for young <laughs> people back at home. You're hard, yeah. be humble, be ready to learn, expose mm. yourself to uh, to a situation where you actually can learn from friends yeah. and uh, everyone we meet who is giving you uh, credible advice. So if you if we if people back at home would like to keep this conversation going, how mm -hmm. can they reach out to you? Um, you can find me. On Twitter, okay. <laughs> of course, at Emma Macharia. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find me on YouTube. I share videos um, every week about my journey in running my business and being an entrepreneur. My YouTube channel is called The Millennial CEO KE. Oh, I do you host any webinar, Zoom meetings where we can? I'm about to get into that actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm thinking of getting into training on that. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, you can let me know, let's say on my YouTube channel. Okay. And I could do a training. All right. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you for having me. All right. So at y 2 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms. At Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to Miss Serena. Mm -hmm. We're going for a musical break and we'll be right back with another interview.